All right, welcome everybody here on YouTube and of course all the wonderful people here in Twitch chat as well for another episode of Mardu Angels. We've had a whole lot of success with this deck so far and uh, let's kind of let's keep trying it. So uh, this specific list uh, that we're playing here, I think we've I think we've played the same we've played the same 75 in two videos so far. I think I've played the deck three times and we've played this 75 in two videos and we're either 10 and one or 10 and0 with it, one of those two. Um, but I, you know, we, we're past like the week one results in standard. A lot of people are playing Sultai and there's a new Esper aggro deck. Um, I don't think we've played too much against those two decks. So it'll be interesting to see how we do against those. Um, but our, our angel package is just so strong. Like these cards are just so good. And, um, and so we'll see how they kind of match up, uh, there, um, of course, control is always just a, a tough matchup for us, uh, but that's what our sideboard's for. That's why we have Duress, Bloodfast, Glass, the Theater of Horrors, the Immortal Sons. We have, you know, 10, 10 of our 15 cards in our sideboard to help out the control matchup. It's these mid-range matchups that I'm kind of interested to see how we do. We do have, like, some settles. Uh, I'm not sure if I really will want Deafening Clarion or not, but, you know, we'll kind of we'll kind of play it by ear here. So uh, let's go ahead and play some Mardu Angels. Dun, 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 dun. Mardu Angels. I think I updated the deckless command, right? Yeah. What are some good cyborg cards as Esper against aggro? Uh Cry of the Carnarium. Um, Kaya's Wrath, if you're not playing that. Um, and then uh, Lyra Dawnbringer, Shalai Voice of Plenty, Angel of Grace. You can board in your own Angel package uh, with those. Um, you can also play the, the Black, Black, White, White card. That's ETB gain three life and they discard a card. That's that's certainly good against aggro. All right, real fast start for the opponent. Real fast start. Just hoping no Vivian. Because Vivian is just amazing against our deck. Well, that's terrible. I've lost so much already. I won't. No one knows the wilds like I yeah. do. They have Vivian in play before I play a third land. <laughs> Turn three Vivian on the play. That's really good. All right, so I, I can I can play Resplendent Angel and have Vivian minus and kill Resplendent Angel. Or like I'm gonna like next turn I'm gonna be contempting the Vivian, so I th I think I'm just gonna wait. They get to tick up and get a random creature, but I think I think their random creature is or like a Vivian tick up I guess is not necessarily a creature, but a Vivian tick up is probably weaker than a Resplendent Angel, especially if I just wait with Resplendent Angel after I have Dawnbringer in play and stuff. Wow. Our punts today. They are they are crushing it. They're we're not playing against uh people drawing bad cards, that's for sure. Balance comes. At least they at least they didn't sequence correctly because they they saved the Vivian tick up for afterwards. Um so now they don't get this contempt anymore. Oh, but they're still rewarded. They get a Chupacabra. That's nice. Chupacabra, also good against angels. Alright, so next turn we play Angel of Grace. Flash that in. Block a Wild Growth Walker. <laughs> Oh. Never mind.
Uh, and they have to have that Chupacabra. If they didn't have the Chupacabra, even, I think we'd kind of have a chance with, with playing a Dawnbringer next turn. All right, so if we play Settle, Clarion, Spyglass, and Immortal Sun, cut a Danto Vanguard. I haven't, I haven't necessarily been bringing in Clarions too much in this matchup before, but I think I kind of want to. Um, what do I not want to do? I could cut. I don't necessarily have to play History Benalia, I suppose. Um, do we want, so basically do we want Clarion? Aurelia can come out here. It's just not, not too powerful. Also, you know, easily dies like basically all of our angels. I think it's, it's the worst of our angels. And I'll play one Clarion. Yeah, I mean, we could just not play Tithe Taker. Maybe we just go real big and just don't have Tithe Taker either. Ugh. All right, untapped. Untap white source. That's what we need here. Yeah, this certainly we this deck could certainly uh, main deck Clarion for sure. This could be a, a Clarion deck. Like, it, it, yeah, like this deck can be tuned to, um, like maybe it's just like main deck Clarion, main deck Spyglass, stuff like that. You know, like honestly. This deck probably could be playing main deck Spyglass. No, I don't think there's really any room for Ethereal Absolution. Um. Yeah, there's... Like, I'd rather just have Immortal Sun. Do you think the tokens had lifelink and playtesting? I don't think so. All right, we'll just go history into history. I don't know what our opponent's doing over there keeping a one lander. And then they even untapped with Landwar off and had nothing to do. So, like, they didn't even have Branch Walker. Rex is built with Theater of Horrors and Crackling Drake. Sounds like a good jank idea. Hmm. You'd certainly want a whole lot of burn spells to turn on the Theater of Horrors and also grow the Crackling Drake. Alright, game three. I like Clarion a little bit more on the draw because we're going to be a little, a little more behind in general.
Hmm. So, like, if I don't play Tithe Taker... Maybe just history on the draw. I take out. I don't know. If, if I don't play Tithe Taker... Is my deck too slow? We just basically don't have things to do early. We'll put in a couple duress. Um, maybe I just don't like. Do, basically, would I would I rather have history or tithe taker? Hmm. Yeah, it went. Yeah, the Abzi and Smothering Tithe deck went five one. Yep. Smothering Tithe was awesome. Uh, we just killed everybody with, like, Rampage of the Clans, I think is the name of the card. We never really did anything with Revel and Riches. I'll play Tithe Taker over History. I could certainly be wrong. No, Adanto is... When you're defensive, you do not want a Danto Vanguard. It is not a. It's only. It's only an aggressive card. That's the only thing it, it can do. Well, our hand's awesome. That's probably why. You know, when you don't have lands, your hands. Your hand better be awesome, and it is awesome. But there's no lands. Wow. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have just like an amazing Llanowar offhand again, like they had the first time. Obviously they do though. This has been our opponents today. Hmm. Please no explore creature. Please no explore creature. Don't do it. Just don't have everything. Don't have turn one land elf, wild growth walker, and jade light. Don't do it. Just just play another wild growth walker. Alright, well, I guess that has to do. That's not great for me, but I guess that has to do. All right, how are we gonna deal with this rascal? It's already at six loyalty, and ultimate's at nine. Brontodon, that's bad for my spyglass plan. Sacrifices must be made. Yep, our plan is play Angel. Play Angel Smash. Go, Seraph of the Angels, go. Or Seraph of the Scales. <laughs> no contempt. Trophy? Alright. We'll take that. Not a contempt. And we get a land. Server 2 uh, with the sub. Sub number 4 on the day. Welcome to the stream. I've been thinking of cast down main or summon the side after playing in the open really strong versus these decks. Cast down is, is better than before. I still don't like killing stuff a whole lot uh, with like fine finality and and everything. Everyone is expendable except me. Wound. Hmm. I guess Vraska can minus and kill a Resplendent Angel. Mm -hmm. 
How's this, how's the uh, stream going for y'all? Hopefully it's not lagging like it was before. Cool, stream's going great. Nice. All right, come on, Deck. We need spells. An unfortunate casualty. We need spells. Oh dang. All right, so let's go vigilance. Um, attack Frasca for six. I'm just gonna minus and kill. Like, do I wait a turn for a Splendid Angel? I kind of feel like I wait a turn. No, because they're gonna go up to six loyalty. I should just play it. I should play it. Yeah, I, I regret not playing it. Brass is going to go up to 6 loyalty. Alright, we're down to 5. Hope they drew a land. And I, I play the arch so like if if our opponent did not attack with Carnage Tyrant, like they didn't want to trade there, then uh then I would have been able to activate Arch of Araska. But they, they did go ahead and trade. That's a good draw. Actually that's that's just really good. We are now looking great. Great draw, Lava Coil. Way to go. Now I... I uh, do not... Now I'm really glad we waited. Actually, this worked out just fine. So they cannot kill Resplendent Angel. Next turn we get to activate Resplendent Angel. Gain 5 life, get a new Angel. Yeah, this is awesome. They needed... Hopefully they do not draw a removal spell. Like, they need a removal spell. Okay, that's good. It's also it's not a bad draw for them either, but it's good for us. Sacrifices must be made from time to time. Oh, they're sacrificing the Midnight Reaper. Okay, well they draw two. They can still draw a removal spell for Resplendent. Please don't. That's good. All right. Um. Yeah, we're gonna send all the spirits at at Vraska, the angel at them. They could, of course, have an instant speed removal spell here. <laughs> yeah, that's Hawkeye on the couch behind me. Yep, he's hanging out. Ah. really good forward with this fight I don't have snow right now but I think it's it's I think there's supposed to be a snowstorm like the next couple days um, but I 
I do not like snow. Oh, come on. Never mind, doesn't look good. It looked good just a little bit ago. Removal. Removal. It's kind of removal. Yeah, I'm, I can't. I can't. I can't pump Angel twice yet. I'm getting close. I live in Roanoke, Virginia, right now. What do I think of Aurelia in this meta game? It's great against the red decks. Um, it's not wonderful in these kind of matchups, but uh, I'm happy with having two. I'm happy with having two. All right, so they paid two life to surveil, and they surveilled Forest Jade Light Ranger over. Did not pay any more life. Green has zero counter spells, correct? Same with black. In standard, blue is the only color with counter magic. All right. One to know. Hey, we got 40 gems also. We got a mythic for our random card reward there. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of weird how blue just has a complete monopoly on like a way to interact with the opponent, like interacting on on the on the stack like that. Um, you know, like all like basically all the colors have removal and creatures and you know all of this other stuff, card draw. But as far as interacting on the stack, you know, with counter magic, it's just blue. Doesn't that feel like a scam? 40 gems are so worthless, like a draft costs 1,500. Um, well, before it would just go towards like a very slight, you would just get the mythic and it would go towards a very slight part of um, like a sliver of a, um, yeah, it only goes towards like a, a sliver of a opening a, a treasure chest. 40 gems is a lot better than what it used to give. The commons and uncommons, when you receive one that you already have four of, go towards that treasure chest still. Yeah, and I didn't mean that like throughout magic the blue has a complete monopoly on it. I meant in standard. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess yeah, red can have expansion. That's true. That's a good one. Hmm. Do I want to pay four life here? So not attack from the opponent. I love being able to trade with the Llanowar Elf. Um, I guess you're all right. Black, black kind of has a monopoly on discard. Opponent got me. I wish I didn't pay life. Okay. 
But of course, if this, you know, like they have one cart left, you know, we, we can gain the life back with uh, Dawnbringer, of course. Yeah, not not blocking over there, opponent. I am not gonna let you draw a bunch of cards with this Midnight Reaper. I don't want them to draw any cards with Midnight Reaper. Okay. If they if they attack out there, I am just going to have the Adanto Vanguard chump block the Midnight Reaper, so I don't take three. Um, that's all I would have done there. Maybe I just play one Immortal Sun. It is really expensive. All right, let's try this. Oh, I need Settle. So I'm playing History instead of Tithe Taker. I think I like that. I know it's not good for my curve, but I, you know, think about the last turn. I think I like History more than than Tithe Taker. I don't know. So they both trade with like a Branch Walker, and then History gives me a two-two instead of a one-one Flyer. No, nah, we'll. That extra mana is really important. We'll play the Tithe Takers. So I'm going to play a third Duress. Why no Shalai? Shalai's not as good if you don't get to act, get to have the activated ability. Uh, just being a 4 mana 3-4 doesn't match up very well in the format. Uh, there's a lot of creatures that kind of... like. There's a lot of 4-4 four, four kind of creatures. Uh, there's Lava Coil. All that kind of stuff um, doesn't match up super well. Just four mana, three four flyer. I don't think it's worth it. Whew. When do you exactly get these gems? If you example half four copies of it, yeah, it's for. Okay, for. Okay, well let me. I'll just keep reading your question. Um, Um, if you have four copies of a card and every other card gets you gems, or do you must have copies of all rares and mythics of the whole set before you get gems for your fifth copy? Okay. Basically, how it works is... Uh, if you get a card randomly in the card rewards, so not opening a pack, and randomly in the card rewards, it just checks to see if you already have four of it. Yeah, if it's a rare or a mythic. If you do have four of it, then then you get gems. Um, as far as pack packs go, if you dang it, that's that's a, a different card that I was hoping they wouldn't have when I wasted my my lava coil. But uh, you know, looking at our hand, I wanted to save our life total. You know, like our our life total, I was really worried about looking at our hand. Um, anyway. Uh, let's say you open a pack and you get a card you already have four of. It just takes that card and turns it into another... Like, if it's a rare, it turns it into another rare. If it's a mythic, it turns it into another mythic from the same set that you do not have four of. If you um, already have four of all the rares and all the mythics, so there's nothing for it to change into, then you get gems. We're not actually doing that bad here. It's like surprising. We're not actually doing that bad here. Hey, and holy shade.
Yeah, you're welcome. So that's how it works. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just play the Hydro Crisis for two last turn and draw a card. Their just plan was just to do nothing. Where's this other white mana? Damping Sphere and Amulet of Safekeeping, I think they are unplayable in standard. I would not recommend having them in your deck. I don't want them drawing another card, honestly. I know we could, like, yeah, we could trade Tithe Taker for Midnight Reaper, could be attacking and stuff. I don't want them drawing another card. They're about to play Jade Light Ranger. I guess I guess we're trading now. They're gonna just have more creatures on, on the ground. Held out as long as I could. But now we have two Mortifies also. So they play they play a creature, we mortify it, get attack in for four. They play another creature, we mortify it again, and so on. They're just keeping Midnight Reaper? Okay. They don't have very much life. Our whole deck is like white mana. Do I mortify that thing? Probably should. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Crazy unlucky. Okay, we're finally in it. Um, it's probably a little too late though. Our opponent has seven cards in hand now. Can we draw a Lyra Dawnbringer please? Man, Lyra would be so good. Certainly feels like they have contempt. Oh, why didn't I attack with the other one too? Uh I clicked that too quickly. Dang it, I need to attack with this thing. Uh, I should attack with Tight Taker. I should have just attacked with everything. Ugh.
Yeah, I'm getting getting a little punished for not attacking with everything. Yeah, it could have been lethal if we would have attacked with everything, if we would have drawn removal spell there. So um, we could have had one more point of damage in, and doesn't matter. Though. So. All right, going to game three. The Great Curry Worst getting in the fifth sub of the day. So Tide Taker didn't really look very impressive at all. Didn't seem necessary. Um, didn't do a whole lot for us. So, yeah, Tide Taker didn't seem like it, it mattered too much. Maybe we just play Histories. Um... Hmm. Do I think Mardu Angels is better than Abzan Angels? I think so. It's close, though. You get some good stuff with green, but... Um, I like the early things you get with red here. No, I'm not playing theater... I'm not going to play Theater, Bloodfast, things like that. They're pretty slow. I'm debating if I do want all the Clarions. If I want another Duress. Um, if I want the other Immortal Sun on the play. Kind of like Immortal Sun. All right, going two duress, two immortal sun. Is it worth it to try and build a mono green deck? Yeah, you could play mono green Stompy. Um, it's it seems like it's it's best to splash a color, but you know if you don't have like the wild cards to splash anything, it, it's fine. Yes, yeah, so we have 18, 18 white sources. So we have lots of white sources. And hopefully get another one here. We did not, though. So no Resplendent Angel. I guess it's probably best for me to cast a Deafening Clarion before I play a Resplendent Angel anyway, though. But we may just be using this. Clarion as lifelink. If I want to save most of my wild cards till things settle down, would you think a gate deck would be a decent one to build and play? Absolutely. Yeah, the gate decks are are uh, pretty good. And yeah, they probably don't take a, a ton of wild cards. So yeah, that's a, a good option. Wow. The last two games have just been... have been filled with these red-black lands. Should I have... I have seven red-black lands. And 18 white sources. I don't know, man. I don't know what to do. my three rares, eight uncommons, and ten commons, and made my first deck mono red. It's working all 
It's working all right. Very good. Awesome. Hey, J-Jack Jr. I really like Seraph of the Scales. Um, you know, Nia, you can certainly play Nia Angels, but I, I really like Seraph of the Scales quite a bit. And Mortify is awesome also. I've been I've been happy with black in the deck. Astral Body with that sub. Sub number six on the day. Yeah, we're getting a pack after this. So I didn't play Deafening Clarion. Um, I was hoping my opponent would just attack all in and I could settle the, the creatures. Because they have double fine finality. So they just get their creatures back. Um, so I, was, I was, didn't want them just to get a, a bunch of creatures back kind of thing. And, and they'd also get like the 1-1s one from the Seraph of the Scales. That's a card I can't beat. I didn't I've seen things that would break someone like you. Yeah, I, I can't beat Vivian. I just can't be Vivian. Vivian's a big hole for the deck. Well, it was certainly a game that, um, you know, basically, the game went really long. Our deck is not nearly as good as Sultai really long, and so it looked pretty bad. Um, but that's the kind of thing that Early on, like, we had to have the two white sources early on. Like, we, you know, we were at turn, like, eight, nine, something like that before we had a second white source to play our cards. It just, we can't, we can't have that. Um, I'm not sure if I, I love the Deafening Clarions. Not, you know, like, Find Finality just makes killing their things unappealing. Uh, we could certainly play Takali Honor Guard uh, as a two drop. I don't love, you know, I don't love Adanto Vanguard, as y'all know. Um, and Tight Thinker been, has been pretty good, but maybe Honor Guard would be better.
Uh, correct, yeah. Vivian and Chupacabra are, are cards that are awesome against my deck, correct. May need another Spyglass in the sideboard. No chiller method, I won't be. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly think the mono blue is not an easy deck to pilot. I think it's the kind of the you know like you don't want to just I mean well I guess that's not really necessarily it's not that's too it's not that's not easy to pilot it's it's very easy to pilot wrong it's very easy to play your cards too early and uh, and everything and and tap out to play your stuff and and all that kind of things and it's easy to play wrong. You basically don't want to play anything except for on your opponent's end step. Or at least leave mana open for your creatures. You know, obviously you can't play your creatures on your opponent's end step besides Trickster. I don't really know what my opponent's doing. I'm just going to submit. It's a good good point in there that your your free wins are really easy to pilot with mono blue, but it's just when you're when you have your bad hands are the hard ones to navigate to try to uh, pick up a victory with. That's a that's a very good point. Is Mono Blue the best tempo deck? Probably. I don't know if... Would like... Is it Drake's be considered a tempo deck? Uh, I have not tried Abzan Angels. Um, yet, but yeah, that's that's something that I want to try. I I am not interested in Assassin's Trophy. Lava Coil is miles better than Assassin's Trophy. But Find Finality is certainly good. Having access to Vivian yourself is very good. Um, so those are those are certainly two really good cards. Um, you can just play Cast Down. Uh, you know, instead, cast down's a lot better than trophy. Um, green gives you like maybe some better two drops. You can honestly just play like like the mana creatures, honestly, to be a little faster, to speed up. Um, those are like honestly the mana. You know, just playing land off and incubation druid is is probably better. The hard part is how much white you need with like Resplendent Angel and History and then playing Land War Elf on top is, is really tough, but you can play Incubation Druid uh, just fine. Like, and uh, you can also, you know, you can play the Explorer creatures also. I would not put Assassin's Trophy in the deck.
Stay Zen streams. Aurelia is, is certainly the weakest of our of our uh, angels. So you know we, we can certainly play Shalai there. You know Shalai's a, a solid option. There. Thing is, the red cards are are just great against aggro. You know you're. You're just really good against aggro with Deafening Clary on Lava Coil, but honestly, you may not need him. Like, green gives you, like, Knight of Autumn also in the sideboard, which Knight of Autumn's an, an amazing sideboard card. So you get, a, you get a lot of stuff there. The five toughness is really nice with Aurelia. That is true. Yeah, uh, between Lava Coil, Finality, um, five toughness is like the key number in standard. All right, Glaive. I'll see you later. All right, so this should work out pretty well for us. We're gonna just go ahead and uh, have. Aurelia put a counter on Resplendent Angel, and then we get to activate Resplendent Angel. Yeah, we I I played a, a white black I played straight white black angels before, and and actually liked it. Uh, it was a donation deck, so it wasn't like a list that I put together. But one thing about the list is that I played it just had four Kaya's Wraths in there, and that was just really nice. Just to, like it just had four Kaya's Wraths in the main deck, and that was really nice of just like you know Kaya's Wrathing a bunch of stuff, and then playing your angels afterwards. Uh, it was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, just playing white black gives you certainly gives you a less painful mana base, and and you don't have to worry about your colors as much. You know, even though I'm a mostly white deck, you know we we really struggled with two games there in our loss because we didn't have white mana, um, and it's a lot easier when you're playing just two colors. Hey, Maskalar. And with cards like. Even just having, you know, cast down, mortify. Uh, there's a lot of removal in, in white black. A lot of good angels in white black. Uh, it kind of give you more room for like more spy glasses, uh, spy glass, immortal sun, that kind of stuff. Do I like Jund with the chain whirler combo? Yeah, chain whirler combo is, is pretty awesome. Um, Yeah, I think it's I think that's a pretty good deck. I basically never want to draw a Dante Vanguard. It's just it's never good. It's, unless I'm playing against control. You're worried this new expansion unbalanced the guilds. Well they weren't they weren't balanced before this expansion. Why don't I just play Resplendent Angel there? Why don't I just play Resplendent Angel? That would have just been better for me. Yeah, like they it's it's really hard. It's basically almost impossible to have all ten guilds balanced, but yeah, you know, like before we we didn't have the ten guilds balanced. Uh They all have. Like, is there any, is there any two color combination that's just completely unplayable? I don't think there is. They all have like their uh, good attributes. The 
this Danitha. All right, since you're uh, playing a lot of different decks and some number of donation decks, have you already tried an Andanto Vanguard deck with the enchantment for B that gets counters when you pay life and kill stuff? I have not tried that yet. Font okay, Font of Agony's deck. I have not. Baby can, I, I don't care. Just been practicing your Mardu Angels while watching your Mardu YouTube videos and now tune in and we're playing Mardu Angels. This evening's amazing. Awesome, Hogzillan. When do you suggest spending rares on lands? I want to start a two-color deck. Rare lands first or rare the other stuff first? Probably, I mean, the lands, so the lands are really important to have and they are, they're really good to have because you can, um, you know, you can move the lands throughout like all the decks. You know, basically any two-color deck you play with those um, are going to be, you'll be using those lands. Um... The thing is, is if I knew exactly like what deck I wanted to play as a two-color deck, I I honestly wouldn't mind waiting a little bit on lands because you can get a, you can get away with Gil Gates. It's certainly worse, but it's it's not like you know necessarily a, a ton worse for you. Um. Guys, I don't care to I don't care to talk about Jeff in here. Move on. Do I want to attack with this Angel of Grace? Hey, Zerf, going good. All right, good. We get to trade Adanta Vanguard with something, which is all I want to do. Yeah, they just yeah they get to gain a lot of life back. So if I attack with Angel of Grace, and then they use a removal spell, then you know it certainly incentivizes them to use a removal spell on a Resplendent Angel with having that as like my one blocker at the time. And I really don't want them to use a removal spell on Resplendent Angel, so I'm going to try keeping the Angel of Grace back. Basically, that's what uh, that's why. Um, I actually, I did, I played a little bit of limited at the beginning of the format to acquire cards, but now for the most part I have kind of the, the cards, uh, all the cards I need here on Arena, so, um, nah, just, just play Constructed. It's a wild storm here in Toronto. It was normally a 25 minute ride on the street. It took me an hour and 45 minutes. Wow. Why is our opponent attacking with this? Am I missing something? Oh, they just want to gain an extra life for a splendid angel. Gotcha. They want to get that angel. Um, yeah, I think that, I think your snowstorm in Toronto is supposed to head south towards me, which I'm not looking forward towards. Hmm.
This is a life gain battle. So they can double block if I kill their Resplendent Angel. Your ma majestic jank deck. Five color jank. So it's all one ofs. Oh, okay, is this commander? Okay, it's commander. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. This is a crazy game. It's 31 to 22, and I just feel like these life totals are just, just going to keep increasing. Oh, boy. Of course, Seraph of the Scales means I can't just, like, auto-resolve everything. Because the stupid Seraph of the Scales animation or not animation sorry uh activate ability all right let's start whittling them down Yeah, I guess I could just activate the Seraph of the Scales and just tap out. No, I th I think we've w I think we're good in this game. I think. Oh, we have Archer Veraska. That's pretty key. We both get an Angel a turn, but ours are five fives. Theirs are four fours. Alright, let's just activate this a bunch, so we don't have to click it every single time. Alright, now we're tapped out. Now we don't have to click OK for every single one of these triggers. I guess they have Dawn of Hope though. Never mind. Dawn of Hope's really good. Maybe we have lost this game. We have a bunch of removal spells. We just need to find any removal spell for the Resplendent Angel. Yeah, this is a lot better not having to click OK on every single one of these. There's a removal spell. Found it. Yeah, they, they cannot make a block that kills Lyra. They block with every single flyer, Lyra won't die, so...
Alright, I'll activate Arch Veraska here because we may uh We may draw a land that we get to play. Yeah, this game yeah, this game looks pretty over. Uh it doesn't seem like they have removal. Um you know, they could certainly have enchantment removal, we haven't seen any. But it looks really good for us. So there's your start at an Angrath Theater deck. Whew. Alright, so yeah, you're going pretty aggressive there. Uh, this Seraph cannot attack. Uh, it has this Luminous Bonds on it, which means it can't attack or block. They're trying to gain a lot of life. Oh, okay, yeah, you thought it was two Seraphs stacked. That makes sense. But yeah, we're still at 74. That's pretty good. I think the game's over next turn, right? Let's see, they have two blockers. Yeah, the game was over even before this removal spell, but the removal spell just ends it easier. We can we can make our life total ten if we want. It only at the low low price of six mana. I guess it wasn't. Yeah, no, yeah, they were taking twenty five. Yeah, they were taking twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> we did. We set our life total to ten. Ten plus a seven. It's just a seven. Uh, Deafening Clarion. It's probably good. And uh, I guess Settle the Wreckage. Yeah, like one settle and three clarion. The tithe takers in history, but allies are just going to play a little bit, def little bit of defense. Um, I could certainly play Immortal Sun to try to get card advantage going. I'm gonna. I'll play one. I think I'll just put one in there. Hmm. I'm take out the contempt also. It didn't really seem like they had anything that I needed to contempt. Like they have Resplendent Angel, but we now have Clarions to kill Resplendent Angel also to go with everything else. I'm gonna cut the contempt. And of course, Immortal Sun deals with Planeswalkers if our opponent does end up having pl like a Planeswalker like an Ajani or something like that. Yeah, and we can make our angels bigger than theirs. Draw more angels.
Hmm. Yeah, I'll keep it. They could certainly... I guess we didn't see a Johnny's Pride mate uh, last game, but they probably have a Johnny's Pride mate, which could get incredibly big. So I'm glad we have the Settle the Wreckage, and it does make me kind of regret taking the Contempt out, because I don't have a lot of removal for large creatures. Right on time. You would assume this deck would play Karn in the board. Our opponent's deck or, or our deck? And with our, our opponent's deck, of course, we'll have, we will have, um, Immortal Sun. Ethereal Absolution is, is a, it's a good card, but it's, you know, it's real expensive. Um, But it is, a, it is a really good card. I don't know if we can really have a, a lot more, like, six mana cards. Maybe better for a, a different deck with more removal. I'm gonna play. Yep, now I'm definitely playing Resplendent Angel this turn. I was gonna play it before, but now drawing another one, definitely. This kind of gives them the test of, like, hey, do you have the removal spell this turn? Because we get to activate it next turn. Which they do. Alright, well. Now we don't have like the backup Resplendent Angel, so I'll, I'll play the Aurelia now. Um, where they'll probably use another removal spell on Aurelia. There we go. And then hopefully the Resplendent Angel is the last angel standing. I'm not playing both angels here because they could they could be playing a Wrath effect, the Conclave Tribunals. Or sorry, a uh, Cleansing Nova. It's certainly possible. We just don't need to play both r Angels. Rough Arena day for you today went like 2 and 12. Those, those days certainly happen. <laughs> that, that settle felt pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was certainly a really good settle of wreckage. Alright, 3 and 1. All right, three and one. We got to get this one so we can get to the final boss. Oh, I never got the pack. Uh, hits cancel too late. Too, uh, not soon enough. Yeah, we got to our first uh, sub goal of the day. We got over five subs, and so I was gonna get a pack. If we get to ten subs, we'll be getting another pack. I haven't played the Simic Adapt deck in a little while, and I'm trying out a new thing with it. I want to try out some incubation incongruity in the deck. Um, so that'll be interesting to try later on. Had a good time though. So yeah, that's good that even though you had a bad day, you had a good time. I haven't changed the teamer gates list since the last time we streamed it yet, but I will be changing it before we play it. I need to have some kind of enchantment removal in the deck. That was an oversight the last time we played it was not having uh, anything there. Hmm. 
Hmm. Thanks, Matthew Ori. Yep. Yeah. You can subscribe there on YouTube, and every 500 subs on YouTube, I will be um, doing another 12 hour stream. So the next one's at 1500. And retract with the sub. Welcome. Welcome aboard. That is... Oh, we are at 34 subscribers. It says that we're... Not keeping fine finality. Interesting. Yeah, we could play Cinder Vines. I actually kind of like just good old Naturalize, honestly. Hmm. Stop. Well, I was going that turn, you know, that turn again of just trying to play Resplendent Angel on turn 5, where on turn 6 we get to activate it. That's a good draw. You and Conflay and Crushing Canopy. Yeah, and cr see, like, both those are, th are, like, cost three and everything. I really like how Naturalize is just two mana, instant speed, and everything. Thanks, Hogzen. Yeah, time to race. This worked out well for us. Uh... uh even though our Resplendent Angel died to the cast down. <laughs> this is Henrietta by the Fratellis. I like just playing Teamer with the Gates deck. Um, you know, four color, of course, is, is an option. Uh, I like my three color deck, though. You splash white for Clarions? Yeah, Clarion, I think, is. Clarion would be the card I'd want to play white. I don't like the Angel, and I don't. I don't think I'd want Ixalan's Binding or anything like that. Uh, Clarion would certainly be the card I'd want. Um, Settle wouldn't be the worst in the sideboard, though, also. Alright, so if we're bringing in Settles, Immortal Sun, Spyglass, Vanguard's out, and Aurelia out. What if we just don't play Clarion? What if we just keep it like this? I mean, no Duress either. I'll we'll just play Aurelia. Let's get a, a whole bunch of these Angels. You know, really, it eats whatever removal spell. Also, another thing they have to answer. We're just going to go with this. It doesn't seem like we ever played Theater of Horrors. Theater of Horrors comes in against the control decks, but we have not been played against control decks, so we haven't brought in Theater of Horrors or Argos Bloodfast at all.
They're on six. They shouldn't have too fast of a hand. <laughs> love, sp love spy glassing. Fetch lands in modern. Nice. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. I need um, I need some disenchant effects in my sideboard. Maybe thrashing Brontodon's the card. No land. We need some more mana. White mana, preferably. The the cards you gain from the daily wins are are uncommons. Kept a three lander on the draw and 26 land deck to draw fourth land. And drew three cards that cost four. Well, dang. Okay. Good to go. I kind of want to just contempt this Midnight Reaper, but then I don't have, have an answer to a Vivian. That's like the big problem. Because I feel like they have Contempt. It's like I play Seraph, they just Contempt it. I'm going to just Contempt. Just hope they don't have Vivian. Vivian. How this That's thing bad. goes is up to you, pal. Balance comes. Vivian's worst case scenario against the Angel deck. Maybe we can find our Spyglass. Or not. Now, do I want to uh, instant speed Angel of Grace? Or play another Seraph? Do I just want to keep on getting these Seraphs in play? Vanifar, Rhythm of the Wilds, and Kitchen Finks in Modern. That could be pretty fun. You sack your Finks, get a Resto, reset Vanifar. Sack Finks again, get another Resto, reset Vanifar. And then sack the Resto to get a Kiki Cheeky. So you just have to... Yeah, you just have to... Un yeah, even with Rhythm of the Wilds, you don't even have to untap with Vanifar. You just have to have those out, play your Vanifar. So there you go. Not so bad. That 
Took a while. Okay. So are we... Another Seraph? Yeah, I'm gonna just keep Seraphing. Come to me. Yeah, Seraph has an awesome animation. Great art, too. Just a wonderfully drawn picture. Know they're drawing Chupacabra. Uh, I've seen squirrels hit harder. I know I could just like settle the wreckage here. Um, but I feel like I need I need to get more pressure on the battlefield against this Vivian. So if they're gonna chupacabra something, I want them to chupacabra the seraph. Meet my newest friend. Yeah, I could I could play Angel of Grace at end step uh, to attack the Vivian. Um and then that gets Chupacabra. -ed. That's my plan for the next turn, I think. I mean, like, after... Yeah, like, the Angel of Grace would have died to the Chupacabra. I, I kind of like just getting the Chupacabra out of their hand, which is what I'm doing here. Oh, so it's going to be like that, huh? You can't stop nature. All right, so they get one more Vivian activation for a forest. Can I wait until the Hydro Crisis attacks me to settle? Like, will I have that ability? Vivian's finally out of here. Let's do this again. Can we settle the crisis with the Wild Growth Walker?
I try to double block the wild growth walker. Of course, they have removal, you know, it doesn't work, but. Because I really don't want to kill the Krasis, but. I don't really have other ways to get rid of it. We're. we're Alright, so we're. This card's really good. Crisis is so good, especially when you, especially with fine finality, just getting it back. That is really nice. All right, at least we got those out of there forever. You've queued into this deck seven times in a row today. Uh, this is let's see, so. Uh, Four, five, six, seven, eight. We've played eight matches. I think this is the fourth of our. I think this is the fourth time we've played it out of eight matches. Hmm. That Vivian was so good. I think it may be time to to be playing. Um, it's maybe time just to be playing. Tagali Honor Guard as one of these two drops. These two drops aren't aren't spectacular, not really that impressive. Um, so it may just be time just to be Tagali Honor Guarding it up. I don't think Lyra saves us there. I don't, I don't think it does. Alright, we got a bunch of angels here. If our opponent isn't stocked full of removal, we should do just fine. Finality is removal. Crisis, just one wild card on Arena, which is nice. It's a pretty good hand. It's not a bad one. As long as they don't have removal spell, though, there's three cards we don't know about. Hopefully, they don't have removal. For this Lyra. Just don't kill Lyra, please. We're doing fine if they don't kill Lyra. See, if they just have finality, we're doing fine. It's always Vivian. The wild wasn't meant that Why can't Vivian? help you now. Hmm. 
wanted the land there to be able to activate Resplendent Angel. Didn't get it. Um, don't really want to play another angel out into uh, finality that we know about. So let's go Vigilance. I may just have to double coil this Wild Growth Walker. Yeah, I think we're just gonna double coil the walker. Ha! I've seen worse. Cause if we if we would have drawn the land, I could have just like held the resplendent angel activation up to save the resplendent angel from a finality. We're attacking in the air. 10 to 8. You had to double coil a 2 drop. A 2 drop that already gained them 12 life, and they're at 8. Favorite standard deck you've played so far? Um. I'm not sure right now. Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have a, a great answer to that question right now, honestly. It's got to be Gates. I should have I should have just vigilance that Sarah for the Angels. So I don't I don't mind playing this down because of like if they finality here, they're dead. Cause if they finality, I get the two tokens from Seraph that kills them. So I don't mind I don't think I'm Yeah, you know, I don't mind playing the resplendent angel, but I should have should have just gone vigilance with the Seraph of the skills though. I could have death touched and killed that Wild Growth Walker. So that kills Wild Growth Walker too. Um, let's just gain life. Oh my gosh! That was lethal? Oh my gosh, I didn't even count it. Oh my gosh. I didn't even count it. I was just thinking about defense the next time. Wow. With them keeping the cast down like that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I didn't even think I had lethal. I did, didn't even count. Ugh. <laughs> Played a little quickly. So that's what I do. I do play quickly here. <laughs> All right. Well, we're still four one. Um, with our second win against the Soltai deck, and we have one loss against the Soltai deck. I think that sounds right. I think. But before before we get to the final boss, good call, y'all. Let's get the b booster pack. Um, Marty basically good to go on Ravnica and guilds. 
like or allegiance and guild. So let's let's get one of these other sets. Um, let's see. I think I've gotten all four of these sets recently, so it doesn't really matter which one we get. I don't think. Let's go with. Um, Let's go Ixalan. No, Rivals. Alright, what do we got? Captain's Hook. That's the thing, there's not a whole lot of like good standard playable rares that I don't have. So... We're kind of just filling out the rest of the collection here. There's probably some, though. I need to go through and, and look exactly what the best packs to be getting. All right, final boss time. Not Boston. Boss time. Here we go. Ooh. And we get to be on the play. We're so lucky. All right, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling we're going to draw some lands. Where's off Guildgate? It's not a land we see too often. It's a nice looking Guildgate though. Alright, so Esper Control. We haven't played against a, a control deck yet tonight. This is the first one. It's the final boss. Hmm. Yeah, angels versus control when you're stuck on two lands is pretty tough. Ooh. Okay, not necessarily just control. Well, I'm glad I have some use for my removal. So that's good. I think we still have use for our removal. Come on, lands. Where are these lands at, though? Honestly, maybe I should just be saving the Lava Coil there and just play another Tithe Taker. It's not like that Tithe Taker is that big a deal. Sorry, we need to move quickly. <laughs> Instant replay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, that was uncalled for. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Takali Honor Guard would certainly be a lot better. So. Yeah, like this Esper deck's getting pretty popular. Honestly, Takali Honor Guard's probably just a Hurry. better card. Alright, good job, Teferi. Hmm. So, I think I like the Deafening Clarions. I think they have a lot of like small creatures and, and tokens and everything. I, I like the Deafening Clarions. I think I maybe just don't need Vanguard or Tithe Taker in this matchup. <laughs> yeah, Sidon's of Lance. I have 26 already in the deck. So many. We have to draw better. Yeah, I don't mind theater horror, honestly. Spyglass and Immortal Sun can be taken by Hostage Taker.
So if I play two duress, one immortal sun, two theater. They do have a decent amount of creatures and everything. Side out Angel of Grace. Why do we want to side out an instant speed spell? All right, we got three lands this time. Let's see if we can, you know, draw a land. All right. Wow, we are, we are just like land flooded now. So do we want to start with history or theater? I think we just start with history. Try to curve history, Aurelia, Lyra. Sounds like a reasonable plan. That card is really good against uh, tokens. I'm just going to ignore the 1-3. Well, I mean, I guess I don't have a chance choice, but if I had a removal spell, I don't think I'd want to use it. I think I kind of regret using the removal spells on it before. Only lands now. Yeah, we have not drawn a non-land this time. Last game we did not draw a land. This game we have not drawn a non-land. Yeah, this deck's getting this Esper deck's getting pretty popular. With like, Golgari already, you know, you know, or Sultai, like whatever, already very popular, and now this Esper deck getting really popular. Uh, yeah, it certainly looks like. Takali Honor Guard is the place to be. Don't kill Dawnbringer. I think best of three ranked starts like February 1st or February 2nd. I believe it's one of those two days. What if we draw our Deafening Clarion? Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Genius have surrounded by lesser minds. <laughs> Was that Angel of Grace? Why couldn't we put the land under the theater and give us the Angel of Grace? That'd have been better. Doing me a favor. Think I should use theater to kill Dovin? I like that idea. They gave the the plus to something that can't attack. All right, deafening Clarion. Come on, Clarion. These results are an anomaly. Clarion not to be repeated. Ooh, there we go. Three damage life link.
That's pretty good. Perfect. Yeah, now Lyra should have double lifelink, right? Isn't that how that works? It helps seeing two cards a turn when you're trying to top deck like that, you know. It certainly helps. Was that that Clarion was our first non non land draw draw also? Yeah, it was the first card that was not a land that we drew. You know, the Angel of Grace went under the theater. Um, anything to change? The history of Benali is probably just not very good, right? On the draw, like, they could snack up the tokens with, like, the 1-3 or with Hostage Taker. Either way, they can get those tokens really easy. Yeah, I think I should just go with 4 Duress. I'm kind of thinking 4 Duress also. I guess I could play Tithe Taker instead of History, but I don't really want to. I could play an Immortal Sun, and our curve is so high. Like, they're a Thought Erasure deck, which doesn't really want me to play Settle the Wreckage. I feel like they they can just take like maybe they just take spyglass with hostage taker also. I don't know if I want a second immortal sun. I'm gonna play the history. I think I think I need to just play things like that they even if they you know interact with them with their uh the one three or with hostage taker, we gotta at least have them interact with stuff. Yeah, they have, like, you know, Teferi and Dovin, and then uh, Thought Erasure, uh, Discovery, uh, Mortify. Uh, Mortify is a big one, of course, to you know, protect our angels. They have a de decent amount of spells. I want to just play the theater. Yeah, I'm just going to get theater and play. Opponents going through what we went through game one. That was our game one. So they got Thief, Thief, WD, WD. Um I know it's kinda of better for me to, to play Lyra. But I'm getting the cards out of theater. Getting the free cards outside of theater. Alright, five and one. Five and one. Well, well, yeah, if if they would have taken our Spyglass, I mean, it would just, like, free their Teferi up. Um, you know how I was talking about that earlier. They could name, like, that Theater of Horrors, I suppose, or, like, Resplendent Angels or Seraph's Abilities, if those come into play. Ooh, we got three rares. Two of them turn into gems, and the last one is a Mishra's Self-Replicator. Cool. 2100 gems again. So another 5-1 with Mardu Angels. 
We've never not had five wins with this deck still. Um, but the two drops, uh, you know, like that whole time, like we were talking about, didn't feel so good. They're they're both really good against control. Vanguard and Tithe Taker are both good against control, and that's that's kind of what they're in there to help. Um, but I feel like we should play Honor Guard. I'm not sure which one I'd want to take out for Honor Guard. I think it's, um, I think it's probably a Danto Vanguard, honestly. Honor Guard, of course, is a is a non bow with the Angel of Grace, but that's not really that big a deal. Um, no, I don't think I don't think I'd want to move the Vanguard to the sideboard, the Adanto Vanguard. I kind of don't want to play Bloodfast. Is Theory of Horrors just a better Bloodfast? Possibly. I have a second Spyglass in the deck for... I'm going to take out the Bloodfast for a second Spyglass in the deck uh, for Vivian. Um, or also, you know, Teferi. Uh, but I think that's a, a change I want to make. Um... Yeah, uh, all the Explore stuff. Honor Guard stops Wild Growth Walker and Jade Lights and all that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, Chubacabra, Hostage Taker. Um, yeah, and it's also just, it's a uh, fine against like the red deck, uh, stopping Chain Whirler or um, Viashina Pyromancer can just kind of block there, stops Venerate Luxodon. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a 1 3, so it can kind of block some other earlier stuff. Well, we, you know, because we, we just kind of want to play some defense there. It's not good against, uh, it's not good against control, which it certainly makes our control matchup worse um, with uh, that switch. But there we go. That's, it does not stop Krasis. No, it does not do anything against Krasis, which is unfortunate. It does not. But that was um, that was Marty Angels. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you for the next video.